What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up a weapon system in Unreal Engine 5. For anyone that's following along with my true first person shooter tutorial series, this is part 5, but it is also a standalone video for anyone that wants to try out this system, which I think is pretty great. So these pickups have simulated physics, so if I hit play, you'll see that they'll fall down to the ground here. I can walk up to them and hold F and equip that weapon. If I go over to this one and hold F, I will equip that weapon and the other one will fall down in front of me like so. So it's spawning a pickup of whatever weapon I'm carrying in front of me as I pick up the other one so I can swap weapons. This system makes the most of uh, inheritance and class references to make all of this work and is fully customizable to achieve whatever it is you might want to achieve with a weapon system. It is really very good. Um, these pickups, as I said, they simulate physics, which I think is pretty cool. So these are objects in the world, which I can walk up to and interact with. Pretty nice. And also, uh, because of the way this is set up, I'm able to reference whatever weapon I am carrying at any given time in my animation blueprint to set up different animations depending on which weapon I'm holding. So without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Okay guys, the first thing we're going to do is import a couple of free weapons packs. So open up the Epic Games Launcher and in the Unreal Engine tab, head over to the Marketplace. And in the Marketplace, what we're going to be searching for is Military Weapons. You can filter this by free and it'll be showing these two. We're going to be adding both of these because there's a weapon from each that I quite like. So I'm going to start with military weapons silver and if you haven't added this to your library already, hit add to library and then add to project and you will need to select show all projects because the versions are different. So hit show all projects find the project that you want to add it to and then change the selected version to the most recent compatible version of this pack which is going to be 4.27 add to project this should download now and add to the project and you can head on over to the other one as well add to library and then add to project show all projects Find the project you want to add it to, change the selected version of 4.27 and add to project. It'll download and add and now you can head on over to the editor. Alrighty, if you open up your project you should notice these two new folders down here, Military Web Dark and Military Web Silver. I'm going to head into Military Web Silver and Weapons and I'm going to find Pistols A. If you want to use some different weapons you're welcome to play around with these. Um, but I highly recommend just following along for now because uh, you'll be able to create uh, multiple weapon blueprints and pick up blueprints. So just follow along for now and, and if you want to use some other weapons, implement some other weapons, you can do that later on. So in Pistols A, um, the first thing I'm going to do is make a static mesh because these weapon packs don't actually come with static meshes. So I'm going to click Make Static Mesh and then find the exact folder that it was in and I'm going to give this the same name pistols underscore a underscore static mesh hit save close that one but straight away find the static mesh that we've just created and open it up and we're going to add a collision to this if you wanted to add more complex collisions, um, you're welcome to do that. For example, you can auto convex collision. Um, I think that just brings this up down here. Um, convex decomposition. So you can change the hull count, the max hull vertices and the hull precision. But even if you just hit apply with these left as default, it will give you a nice complex collision. But for today, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove that collision. All I'm going to do is add a box simplified collision just to give this a box collision. That's all we need to do in here so we can save and close that. 
um, and in military weapons dark weapons I'm gonna find assault rifle B and open up assault rifle B and again click make static mesh find the folder that it was in web dark weapons and call this assault underscore rifle rifle underscore B underscore static mesh hit save close that find the static mesh and open it click collision add box simplified collision and hit save and close that okay the next thing we're going to do is add an input uh, so if we look for the first person folder here and input uh, straight away I'm going to delete this input mapping, mapping context weapons because we don't need that that's the mapping context for when you pick up the weapon that comes in the first person template um, we're just going to stick to using the IMC underscore default for now but in actions I'm going to right click and find input input action I'm going to call this input action underscore interact and open this up and if you wanted to just leave this as a button press you could just leave this as default you wouldn't even need to open it up but I am going to add a trigger and I'm going to change it to hold drop this down change the threshold to half a second and check is one shot because I want this to behave much like a very popular first person shooter that uh, shall re remain unnamed uh, so just adding a trigger, changing it to hold, change the threshold to half a second and check is one shot. And that's it. We can save and close that and just back out to the input folder and open up IMC underscore default and drop down mappings here. You'll see all the input mappings here. We can add a new one. We can select the IA interact that we just created and we can click this keyboard icon and press the button we want it to be mapped to so you can change that to F um, and that's it save and close that and the next thing we're going to do is head up to our underscore main create a couple of new folders here let's create one called interfaces that's going to be for our blueprint interfaces we can also create one called props and within props we're going to create a folder called pickups and one called weapons in our interfaces folder let's right click and find blueprint blueprint interface and I'm going to call this BPI underscore interact open up BPI interact and straight away you'll see that it's going to suggest you rename the function uh, let's just rename it interact and we're not going to actually implement any of the logic in here but um, we're just going to rename the function interact and we're going to add an input and we're going to call the input character picking up and we're going to change it to the type of our characters blueprint object reference so an object reference to our characters blueprint Sometimes that doesn't work the first time. You just have to do it a second time. It's odd. Compile and save. That's all we need to do in here. We can close that and head on over to our props folder and weapons. And we are going to create a new blueprint class of type actor. And we're going to call this BP underscore weapon master. We are also going to create, if we right click and go blueprint enumeration, and we're going to call this enum underscore weapon type and we're going to duplicate that and we're going to call the other one weapon name open up enumeration weapon type straight away we're going to add a few enumerators we're going to call these hit scan projectile and melee 
enumerations are basically um, a list of information so that you can uh, reference uh, several different types. Um, it's hard to explain, but it'll become very clear very, very soon. Trust me. We can open up the other enumeration weapon name and we are going to add a few again. But instead of naming the weapons in this list, I'm just going to keep them as integers. So 0, 1, and 2. And instead, I'm going to keep their names over here as notes in the description. So I'm going to call this first one unarmed. I'm going to call the second one pistol. And the third one assault rifle. The reason for this is um, this will be more easily referenced in my animation blueprint and used to separate the animations for each weapon. So um, that will also become clearer in a later shoot, but just for now, we're going to keep it like this. Save that and close that. We're going to leave BP Weapon Master for now and head over to Props and Pickups. And we're going to create a blueprint class of type actor and call it BP underscore pickup master. This is going to be the parent class for all the pickup items in the game. We can open this up. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a new component, static mesh component. And let's call this pickup object. We can drag it onto scene root to replace the root. And over here, we're going to change the static mesh to just anything, really. I'm just going to select this sphere. Um, it's literally just a big ass sphere. Doesn't really matter what object it is. Um, but the reason we, we uh, put a static mesh here is so that we can um, give it some attributes that will be inherited in the child classes. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is search for tick and uncheck start with tick enabled. We don't need tick. And I'm also going to search for physics and check simulate physics. Um, I'm not actually sure if these will be inherited, but uh, let's give it a go anyway. I'm going to check mass and change it to 60. Change the linear damping and the angular damping to 0 0.25. Compile and save. Um, and I'm going to add another component, which is going to be a sphere collision and I'm going to call this pickup radius. Select pickup radius and change the sphere radius to 100. Very good. That's all we need to do in here. Um, so we can close pickup master, but I'm going to right click on it and create a child blueprint class. And I'm going to call it BP underscore weapon pickup bp underscore weapon pickup um, this will be the parent class for like i said all the pickup items in the game um, but you may want your weapon pickups to behave slightly differently to all your other items so uh, bp weapon pickup will be the parent class of all our weapon pickups we can op open up bp weapon pickup we can create a new variable uh, called weapon to spawn of type BP underscore weapon master class reference. Okay. Compile and save that and close that because we are then going to right click on that and create a child blueprint class of that. And we are going to call it BP underscore pistol pickup BP underscore pistol pickup in BP underscore pistol pickup what we can do is select the pickup object and change the static mesh to the static mesh of the pistol that we created pistols a static mesh and that's really all we need to do in here um, this is a static mesh of the pistol it has physics enabled because that's been inherited from the parent class um, and it has a pickup radius here that allows us to interact with it. That's all we really need to do in here. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is head back over to our weapons folder and open up BP Weapon Master. 
we are going to add a skeletal mesh component. Let's call this weapon model. And we can drag that onto the scene root. We can search for tick and disable start with tick enabled we don't need tick on this and we are going to create a few variables um, let's just call the first one damage of type float and we can duplicate that a few times and rename these uh, penetration Penetration range, maybe, um, and magazine size. Now, we're not actually going to start using these today, but uh, this is, as I said, the parent class for all of our weapon blueprints. So you can add any uh, variables in here that are going to be common across all of your um, all of your weapons. So, you know, these are just some basic ones that you might, you might want to make use of later. And let's say, let's also add recoil pattern. That will be of type curve vector. I might do a shoot later on, on uh, curve vectors, but uh, yeah, so here's some basic ones that might be common along across all of your weapons. Um, let's also create one called weapon type and we can search for the enumerator whoops we can search for the enumerator we created called weapon type we can also create whoops forgot how to type today weapon name and we can search for the enumerator we created enum weapon name we can also add one called pickup class and that will be a class reference to the weapon pickup master um, which is BP weapon master no sorry <laughs> uh, BP weapon pickup class reference Pickup class, BP weapon pickup. Nice. Uh, we can compile and save that and close that. Uh, we're going to right click on it and create child blueprint class. And we're just going to call this one BP underscore pistol. Open up BP, BP pistol and select the weapon model. Change the skeletal mesh asset to the appropriate skeletal mesh pistols A and in class defaults we as I said we created a bunch of these variables um, for common use across all of our weapons but the main ones we're worried about right now are weapon name and pickup class so if you remember the weapon name that we gave to pistols was one and the pickup class is going to be the BP pistol pickup. Okay. We can open up our character's blueprint now. And we are going to look for the input action that we made, which is IA underscore interact. We are also going to get overlapping actors of class filter pickup master, BP underscore pickup master. We are going to get the first overlapping actor and we are going to send out a message our BPI interact interact message. While we're here, we're also going to create a custom event and we'll call it spawn weapon. And click on spawn weapon and over here, add an input. We'll call it weapon to spawn. 
and it is going to be a reference to our weapon master class so BP weapon master class reference compile and save that now this actually doesn't have anything to interact with what we need to do is go into our pickups folder and in our pickup master we are going to click class settings and over here we are going to under interfaces click add and we are going to add the BPI interact interface which you will now see over here in interfaces if I then go to the child of that which is weapon pickup interfaces will be over here and we can either right click on that and go implement event or we can just double click it and it will pop up here in the event graph off of character picking up we are going to find the spawn weapon custom event that we created and weapon to spawn will be weapon to spawn here which we created earlier plug that in there and while we're here we might as well also destroy actor it's going to destroy itself once uh, this has been done so when we when we pick up the weapon uh, it will spawn weapon and it will destroy this pickup pretty sure that's everything we need to do in here so we can close that close this um, so when we interact it's going to get the first overlapping actor of the class pickup master it is going to send out a message uh, the BPI interact which then will um, spawn the weapon and in spawn weapon here uh, we're just going to drag off weapon to spawn and go spawn actor from class we can uh, right click the spawn transform and split this struct pin um, we might just right click and go get actor location and we're also going to get uh, actor forward vector we are going to add these but we are going to multiply this one let's just do 50 on the X and 50 on the Y add those together so we are just spawning this 50 units in front of our actor here plug that into the transform location um, and I'm also off the return value I'm going to promote this to a variable and I'm going to call it current weapon this is going to be very handy we will now be able to reference whatever weapon we've got at any given time um, and I am going to attach actor to component we're going to have to create a socket for this um, we are also going to just move this out a bit here put this down here to make some space at the front here even more I think um, now that we've created this current weapon off of spawn weapon let's just check if our current weapon is valid get an is valid just gonna plug this into the execution pin here if there is a current weapon we want to um, destroy it destroy actor but before we destroy actor we're going to um, generate a pickup so off of current weapon what we can do is find the pickup class that we've created get pickup class and we can spawn that ah this is this was actually meant for that sorry I uh, got ahead of myself here um, this this is going to be attached to here this is not the transform of this this is actually where we want the pickup to spawn um, we'll spawn actor from class the class is going to be the pickup class 
and the spawn transform we can split the struct pin and we're going to spawn this just in front of where we are so if we um, if we interact here get the first overlapping actor it's going to spawn a weapon the weapon to spawn um, it is going to uh, if if we already have a weapon so we're checking is current weapon valid if it is we're going to spawn the pickup of that weapon just in front of us so we're essentially going to drop the weapon it's going to seem like we're dropping the weapon um, and then we're going to destroy the one in our hands we're spawning the new one here this might not seem clear with this like this I'll just grab some reroute nodes so it looks clearer A little bit of spaghetti code here, but um, I think uh, I think you should be able to wrap your heads around this. Pretty smart guys. We are so yes. If we have a weapon, we're spawning the pickup of that weapon in front of us, destroying the weapon from our hands. Um, and if we don't have a weapon, we just want to go ahead and spawn this new weapon. spawn this new weapon, um, set the value of current weapon to that new weapon, attach actor to component, um, and this is going to be our um, body, attach it to a body and the socket we will create right now. So if you find your metahumans folder, we, well, I mean, we've already got the character blueprint open here, so we can just go to the viewport and click on the body and find this skeletal mesh, open this up, and then click the button that takes you to the skeleton up the top right here. Let's find the right hand. Find the right hand, right click and go add socket and let's call this the pistol socket pistol socket right click on the pistol socket and add preview asset find the pistol A put it in his hand that looks uh, way too big for the record. I think these were designed to be to scale for the um, mannequin's hands. Um, we will play around with that eventually, but for now, let's just put it just about in the correct position in his hand. And save that and close that. Um, oh, just before we close it, actually, just we need to remember what that socket was called, but instead of remembering, let's just hit F2 to rename the pistol socket and Control C to copy to make it foolproof. So we're just copying the name of pistol socket. And then in our characters event graph, we're gonna change the socket name to pistol socket. Um, let me just uh, implement something else here that is going to come in handy later. Um, off of current weapon, what we can do is um, get get the weapon name. Get weapon name, the enumeration here, and off of weapon name, we can do uh, switch by enum weapon name just trying to keep this as clear as possible so what this is doing is um, this is basically train tracks for your code here um, if if the current weapons weapon name is one 
it's going to attach to the pistol socket and later on you know you can uh, you could duplicate this and plug it into two target will be body and in your skeleton you could also create an assault rifle socket um, sorry where is my head at right now um, pistol socket we can get rid of the preview there um, and on the hand add another socket call it the rifle socket add a preview of the assault rifle which I believe was B and again I think the scale is way off here that's huge that's longer than his leg <laughs> um, just put that in just about the correct position for now that'll do for now um, so we've created a, a rifle socket as well and again we can copy the name of that socket and then paste it in here into the socket name so this is one of the advantages of using a system like this with all proper class references and inheritance is um, I can I can reference the current weapon at any time and say grab the um, enumeration value of that weapon and uh, like I said this switch on enum weapon name is like train tracks and uh, you can implement different code for whatever weapon you're carrying at any given time um, that should be that all set up um, ah we also need uh, to select uh, set the character picking up as self so get a reference to self plug that in there and a couple of other things I just want to double check the BP pistol pickup weapon to spawn in class defaults should be set to the BP pistol uh, this reminds me while we're here we might just open the weapon pickup and add uh, weapon name in here don't necessarily need this right now but this might be good to have later on the enum weapon name as weapon name in here and in BP pistol pickup that weapon name will be one that should be everything if I just grab the pistol pickup I'm just going to spawn a few of these um, and I might just rotate them so that when they spawn we get to see the simulated physics in action if I hit play now walk over to these I should be able to pick that up and now that I've got a weapon in my hand if I go to pick up another one it'll destroy that weapon and spawn another pickup in front of me um, it's hard to see uh, that this weapon's actually being destroyed so let's just very quickly set up a, a pickup for the assault rifle as well so we can duplicate this pistol pickup and call it let's just call it rifle pickup for now BP underscore rifle pickup obviously the rifle pickup is going to be the static mesh of the assault rifle assault rifle B static mesh and in class defaults you will change this uh, we need the blueprint um, let's also create the blueprint in weapons duplicate BP pistol call this one BP assault rifle open up BP assault rifle change the weapon model to the assault rifle B weapon model and the class defaults always check the class defaults are 
the main things um, are going to be the weapon name this one was two and this pickup class is going to be BP rifle pickup that we just created and in BP rifle pickup BP assault rifle is going to be the weapon to spawn we can bring this in oh this is BP assault rifle sorry pickup BP rifle pickup I was wondering why it didn't have the pickup radius on it copy this one a few times whoa there we go now if I hit play I can pick this one up if I pick up an assault rifle it should spawn a pistol in front of me uh, and attach the assault rifle which hasn't attached what's going on here Ah, target, target is self, forgot to plug that one in there, the target is the new current weapon attaching to the parent body of rifle socket, they should all be working fine now, there we go, it is spawning an assault rifle in my hand, a fucking massive assault rifle, um, we can play around with that later on. Um, actually, we could we could do something about that right now. We could go to the um, blueprints and the weapon model and just change the scale to um, whatever we think is good. Let's try let's try zero point seven. And this might actually um, this might actually apply to both. We can. BP assault rifle, why is that showing a pistol? Didn't we change this? Why is that showing a pistol? We changed the skeletal mesh asset to an assault rifle right there and we just we just saw it working. Um, that's strange. BP pistol, BP assault rifle showing a pistol strange what if I close that and I just reopen it yeah that was weird select the weapon model change the scale to 0 0.7 as well that's looking a little bit more realistic there the fingers should come just past the trigger guard and there we go spawning the weapon in our hand and dropping the pickup in front of us that's working really quite nicely why don't we very quickly implement some fire logic on these weapons huh okay so to implement some fire logic uh, we're going to go to the interfaces folder and create a new blueprint interface bpi underscore fire we are also going to find our inputs inputs folder it's first person input actions create a new input action called ia underscore fire and we are also going to back out and go into our default mapping context and add this new mapping IA fire that we've created and if we click on the keyboard and then left click our mouse set that to left mouse button we can save that and close that we don't need that anymore in our characters blueprint let's find the input action fire that we just created input action fire and when it's triggered um, actually let's um, let's create some fire modes really quick um, 
we can, in our weapons folder, create another enumeration, blueprint enumeration, call this enum underscore fire mode. And let's just create two and call one semi and full auto. Semi auto and fem full auto. We can also add this to our weapon master. So we can add a variable here fire mode, find the fire mode enumeration that we just made and inside our weapons blueprints we also want to set those class defaults fire mode semi auto by default you can add um, you can add functionality to switch fire modes for different weapons later on um, but for now we're going to set the fire mode of the pistol as semi auto and the assault rifle go into the class defaults and change the default fire mode to full auto okay and then in our characters blueprint what we can do is grab the current weapon uh, let's just check is valid first check that we have a weapon and if we do have a weapon we can switch on enum that's going to be uh, fire mode so get the fire mode first get fire mode and then switch on enum fire mode if it's semi auto we are just going to uh, where's the fire BPI fire BPI interact, no, BPI fire. We need to um, do something with BPI fire, don't we? We can rename that to fire for starters. Compile and save. We should be able to we should be able to fire BPI fire there we go the target is going to be the current weapon okay um, we haven't actually added this yet but um, we, we can just straight up go to the weapon master BP weapon master and in class settings add the interface BPI fire okay um, in each of we'll set that up in a second so that's um, that will work that will go over to there and fire um, and if we are doing full auto we are also going to fire and then we can do a delay the delay will just be um, this will be the fire rate so if we set it to 0.1 it'll fire 10 times a second and then on completion um, that can go back around to fire again Okay, so semi-auto will fire, full auto will fire, delay for 0.1 of a second, and then fire again. Um, you can add in some other stuff later on, such as, you know, a, a boolean for can fire, can the weapon fire, you know, and, and it, does it have ammo, etc, etc, etc. You'll be able to add a lot of stuff to this system. Um, the basic bones are here. Um, we just now need to tell um, our weapon blueprints, our current weapon, what to do when it fires. So in BP pistol in the event graph, we can bring up the fire 
and um, these weapon packs come with montages um, so what we might do later on is create a custom event um, which will be a line trace um, when our weapon fires it will fire a custom event line trace and um, we could call that from here but for now let's just play an animation montage um, play montage this will be the montage of oh uh, it won't be montage will it what uh, what do these weapon packs have pistol A um, oh, they'll be in maybe they're all all in the other folder weapons anims weapon dark weapons are uh, weapons anims here we go so ah uh, they're just animation sequences they're not montages so if we open up the pistol fire we've got these nifty animations of the weapons firing um, one thing you might want to do is just double check that they are set up in a way that you like so we're doing the pistol here let's find the animation of the pistol firing this is the one if we pause it and we grab this timeline we can look at when the hammer is coming forward and when it actually fires the muzzle flash is going off way too soon here so I'm gonna look at for when the hammer hits and the slide starts to come back and right there I'm just gonna move these into place so that now the triggers being pulled the hammers coming forward and when the hammer hits boom muzzle flash and the slide comes back um, so we've edited that and we found that uh, in BP pistol we are just going to play animation on the weapon model and the animation to play is going to be the pistol fire pistol W is that the one that we found fire pistol W yep fire pistol W in the assault rifle let's just find the assault rifles firing animation really quick weapons dark weapons anims fire rifle W we'll just leave this one as is for now but just to double check the one that we need is fire rifle W in BP assault rifle in the event graph double click fire to implement this event play animation on the weapon model and it's going to be fire rifle W that should all be set up now with semi auto and full auto fire logic so oh, what's the error that we've got here blueprint failed to compile ah the target didn't plug in the target seem to be forgetting that a lot today sorry about that now if we pick up a pistol we should be able to left click ah it's uh it's only once we're releasing this is something to do with the input um so let's find our input actions um uh, you know what instead of uh, setting it to triggered let's just set it on started there we go weapons firing pretty cool pick up the assault rifle it's starting to fire but it's not stopping um, so how are we going to implement that um, 
Oh, that's just going on an infinite loop. Um, let's just let's just create a variable real quick um, and call it can fire question mark. Okay, and when we trigger this, we're going to set can fire as true, and when we cancel or complete we'll set it as false and then over here we can just do a branch checking if can fire if can fire continue to fire should be as simple as that. That is working as expected. Guys, that is pretty much it. Uh, that's all we set out to do today. Um, if this video has been of any use or value to you at all, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.